Okay, so I've provided um, some data and and some uh, lots of examples that we can use to explore that data. And we're going to spend the rest of this lecture getting acquainted with matplotlib and pandas uh, using that data and those, those uh, examples. So matplotlib is, is perhaps the most well-known Python visualization library. It stands for Mathematical Plotting Library. Uh, and you, there's a whole website to, devoted to it. And pandas, I mentioned that on the previous slide, pandas, pandas is a fundamental part of the, the Data Explorer's toolkit. And it stands for panel data. Not quite sure why. Uh, it's also got its own website. Uh, and it allows you to read data into a spreadsheet-like Python object. So we, if we're going to do this in Python. We can get an object in Python that, that looks a bit like a spreadsheet with, with named columns and named rows, which is called a data frame. That's a fundamental part of our of all our explorations is a data frame, which is a, basically a set of rows and columns with the data in it. And we can easily manipulate this bit frame uh, using row and column based operations. And then we've got a, a, a nice interface these two, they're, they're two separate libraries, pandas and matplotlib, but they're, they're closely related. Um, they've kind of grown up around each other. So there's a simple interface to doing uh, visualizations using the data frame. OK, so the data um, I provided, it's, it's from a fictional company called Crisco. So all the data I've, I've made up, I've built uh, some code that, that constructs it. And we'll be looking at this same data throughout the term. and um, and some more data relating to the company's website in the tutorial. So it gives you a, a whole bunch of data that we'll see as we go through the term, different ways of exploring this data uh, to get more and more insight from it. Um, for now, what we're looking at is product data. So this fictional company sells 25 different products uh, labeled A to Y and has provided daily sales data for each product on each day of 2019. So uh, just to make things simple, the sales are online and fictional, so they can sell on weekdays and public holidays. So uh, those things don't have too much of an impact. Uh, so that means there's a total of 25 products times 365 days, which is 9,125 data points. Not, not a huge data set, but uh, enough for us to, to, to start to explore some of the techniques. The data is pretty cleaned and straightforward, so there's no there's no missing values um, and there's no zeros except where they, are, you know, there haven't been any sales. So it, it's uh, it's we don't have to do any cleaning on it. Um, and this company, fictional company, is interested in understanding what data shows and, for example, products that maybe have sales that are declining over the year, or aren't very profitable, or cost too much to market, or can be sold together. We're going to be able to look at those things. So, for example, to be sold together, you know, you often see on a website customers who bought one of these also bought one of those. Um, we may be able to spot those kind of things in the data as we go through the course. Not today, but later on. Okay, so to get started, um, the first step in any data exploration is to read the data in and print out some details to see what we've got. Okay. And pandas has a function called read CSV to read in a CSV file. All you need to, to do when you do that is to say which column contains the index, which is the, the index being the names of each row. Okay, so, uh, and usually that's going to be column zero, or the data might help not have an index. And then there's, there's lots of functions for understanding the data. So head, for example, just because we might have, you know, 365 rows, uh, we don't want to see all of that. We can just print out the first few rows. So head 10, for example, just prints out the first or returns the first 10 rows, which we can then print out. Or tail, we can get to get the last few rows, or we can get shape to find out how many rows and columns, or describe to, to calculate some statistics, or sum to, for example, calculate the sum of each column. Uh, and we can print all of these things out with a Python print command. So here's um, here's some a code that does uh, just that. Okay. This is the entire code of example four. You can see we're importing uh, matplotlib and pandas as PLT and P PD. That, that's really common, actually. Almost, almost all the examples I've looked at do exactly that. Uh, we read in the data uh, there from, uh, there's a, it's all on um, this tiny URL, which actually links to um, uh, 
to a GitHub site that I've created. But you can also download the data from uh, from the you can download the data where you've got this, and that will then allow you to have it locally if you want to. Uh, and then we convert the index to date objects. So the index is the is in column zero. That's the the date. Um, that's going to be useful. We'll, we'll need that later. We don't really need it now, but we convert them to date objects so that pandas knows that these are dates and not just strings. Uh, and then um, the output from this tells us a lot about the data. Let me show you that. So here it is. Um, actually, this program, you can see, doesn't even need matplotlib because we're not doing any plotting at the moment. So you can see as I printed out the data there, um, what's it giving? What am I printing out? So the first I print out the data, and because there's too much really to visualize, um, Pandas has simplified it, and so it's only giving me the last, the first five rows and the last five rows, which are, you can see the um, 1st of January, 2nd of January, and then the 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th, 31st of December, showing me the column names. So that, these are the different products, A up to Y. Okay, that's this line here. Uh, sorry, that's this line here. Uh, and you can see that's, so for example, on the 1st of January, 526 of product A were sold. On the, on the 1st of January, three of product B were sold, and so on. Okay, that, that we don't usually print out the whole data. Instead, what we're more likely to do is just print out at the head. There's the head. That's the first five uh, rows. So that's this line of code. Or we might print out the tail. That's the first last five lines. Uh, or we might print out um, a description. OK, so this one uh, is a, a function provided by Pandas that will tell us about the data. So it shows that the there's 365 values of A, so one for each day, as we, we, we knew that already. The average value for A is 479. That means the average number of sales over the year Average daily sales over a year is 479, as opposed to B, where it's only 12. So A is a much higher selling product. And then we've got standard deviation, min, max, and, and some other statistics. And then uh, printing out data.sum tells us that, for example, A, the total sales for A were 175,173. OK, so we can get all that information uh, from just doing some simple print statements. Um, we're going to use, basically, we're going to use this, this code at the top. Um, so the first few lines of code in all our, our examples, but we won't print out all the details. We don't need them so much. So the first thing to do um, is to try and understand what's, you know, what, what are the most important. We can see that, for example, just in what we looked at then, A is much more, um, sells much faster than B. So they sell much more product A than product B. So what we could do is just sort the values um, and print that out. OK. So this sorts, this uh, this first bit of code sorts the data according to the maximum value in each row. OK, so we can find the maximum of each row. Or this perhaps more useful, sort the data according to the sum of each column. OK, so we want to sort them by the sum of each column, and that will that will order the columns uh, so that the, the largest column comes first. So if I run that one, there's a code. Uh, so you can now see uh, I've, I've sorted them so that the, the largest selling column comes first, so F turns out F is, over the year, F is the largest selling product, then A, then L, then J, and so on. Okay, and that still gives us the, the dates, but we've also sorted by date. So the the smallest, if we, I think this is done, why is this done? Okay, smallest first in terms of date. So this, the lowest value that A, F sold was on the 6th of February, 2019. Uh, 470. That's the lowest value for product F. Okay, so we can see the quietest day for sales uh, for F was, um, sorry, that's that's not quite right, is it? That's the quietest day for the total sales was February the 6th. Busiest day for the sales was January 22nd. Uh, that's uh, later on. Um, and the best selling products are FA and L. 
um, <clears throat> worst selling products, if we look at the other end of that uh, table, are UK UNR. So we can get that, you know, just by doing different statistics here, we can get quite a lot of information. But, you know, this is a visualization course, so let's do some visualization. I'm going to stop the video, video here and then we'll do some visualization. <clears throat> 